The King's unwillingness to firmly resolve the scandal surprised both Buckingham Palace and supporters of the monarchy, who suspected Charles of trying to hush things up so as not to provoke the Duke of Sussex to even louder revelations. Tom Bauer, a British writer and author of a number of biographies and investigations, including Revenge, Meghan, Harry and the Windsor War, is convinced that King Charles is willing to turn a blind eye to Prince Harry's antics and words because he has reason to fear his youngest son, the Daily Mail reports. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the latest news from the royal family. At a recent private dinner for friends hosted by Charles and Camilla at Clarence's house, the King's guests were stunned by his apparent reluctance to confront his son Harry over his infidelity. In the face of much slander, indiscretion and provocation, Charles gave away one of his basic weaknesses. A constitutional reluctance to deal with personal problems face to face. Rather than fight for an important principle, as Charles revealed to his guests, he chose to shy away from a bitter battle, Bauer notes. The British media have already written that the King may seek reconciliation with the Duke of Sussex by admitting his mistakes. It is possible that such a proposal must have really shocked British monarchists, an electorate that makes up the vast majority of King Charles's subjects. They are convinced that if Monk gives in to pressure from Prince Harry, it means Buckingham Palace's inability to control the agenda. The most likely reason for the King's behavior was Harry's claim that he threw out half of the final manuscript because of its length, which means he may reveal more family secrets in the next book, making his father look very unsightly. No one knows better than Carl that Harry has barely touched the surface when it comes to his tumultuous marriage to Diana, his complicated relationship with his own parents, and his marital infidelity with Camille. The defeated King knows he has every reason to fear his son. Charles's resolve is also weakened by guilt. He is aware enough of himself to realize that since Diana's death, he has been anything but the supportive father he should have been. Too often, on weekends and during school vacations, Harry was left in the care of an Annie in Highgrove, while his father went about his business or settled down in another house with Camille, Bauer stresses. One of the most poignant and revealing quotes attributed to Charles in Harry's book is the King's call to his sons after Prince Philip's funeral. Please, boys, don't turn my last years into misery. Bauer emphasizes that with these words, Charles showed his vulnerability. He feared that his reign might be ruined by Harry and Meghan. And it seems to me that Meghan specializes in any human weakness. Just as she humiliated her own father and abandoned her family and many friends, she seems to be retaliating against Harry's family for supposed neglect, the writer is sure. All the king's intentions, however, have so far been rather successfully countered by the prince and princess of Wales, who have taken the brunt of the blow. Prince William understands that any concession by the king to Harry's blackmail could result in serious reputational losses for the British monarchy, so he does not intend to let it happen. It's hard to believe that William or Kate see any advantage in giving in to Harry's demands. Concessions, they believe, will only lead to more accusations. William knows that the king and his advisors are on a dangerous path. Talk of reconciliation is a mirage. Harry and Meghan will agree to nothing less than total surrender and victory, Bauer is certain.